A-I-T-A for calling my wife every morning to wake her up? My little guy is 20 months old, and my wife is a stay-at-home mom while I work six days a week, usually out of the house for 12 hours. Our son has a solid routine, sleeps great, and wakes up around 8, 0 every morning. Since I can't be there in person, I check in on him through the nursery cam app on my phone to see how he's doing, and I always notice him awake, standing in his crib, just waiting. It bugs me that when I check, usually around 9, 0, or sometimes closer to 10, 0, he's still just there, awake in the dark, and my wife is still asleep. When I see that, I turn on the nightlight through the camera, tell him, good morning, and I love you, and he'll usually laugh and say, data. Then, I call my wife to wake her up because she's still knocked out, and it usually takes three or four calls before she finally picks up. When she does answer, it's clear she just woke up, and I tell her that our son is awake and waiting for her. This morning was no different, except when I asked her if she was going to get him after using the bathroom, she said no. She was going to make breakfast first and then get him. That's when I asked her to grab him right after the bathroom so he could join her in the kitchen. She lost it. She told me I piss her off by calling every morning to tell her how to be a mom and that she already has a routine. I shot back saying, well, your routine sucks because he's been awake for an hour and you'd still be sleeping if I hadn't called. It really bothers me that my son has to wait in his crib so long. He needs a diaper change, is probably thirsty or hungry, and just wants to play. But now, I'm second-guessing myself. Should I stop calling every morning? Am I wrong for feeling this way? I did. All right, so let me clarify a few things because this post blew up more than I ever imagined. First off, I absolutely do not think my wife is a bad mom. She's an amazing woman and a great mother. I love her, and I hate how some people jump to conclusions about her from the limited info I gave. This wasn't me trying to bash her, but I get why some of you saw it that way. The whole reason I call her every morning is that it stresses me out to see my son awake for so long without anyone getting him. My wife and I talked about this afterward, and she admitted she's been staying up too late and now has alarms set to fix her sleep schedule. As for medical stuff, yeah, I left that out originally. And I get why people think I was trying to hide something, but that wasn't the case. She's dealing with postpartum depression, which is being treated by a professional. She's on medication, one usually prescribed for ADHD or narcolepsy, because her doctor thinks it helps with her energy levels. It seems to be working. She has low vitamin B12, but it's not a full-blown deficiency. Her levels are just lower than ideal, and she's taking supplements. The blood work came back mostly normal, and her doctor didn't find anything else to explain her chronic fatigue. Her chronic fatigue seems to be partly due to poor sleep habits, she stays up late on her phone, sometimes moves to the living room after I've fallen asleep, and struggles to fall asleep at a decent hour. We've disagreed on the cause of her tiredness. She thinks it's insomnia, I think it's the late night phone use. Either way, it's a vicious cycle. I understand that people thought I was micromanaging or spying on her, but that's not what's happening here. We've got two cameras in the house, both in our son's room, one for a wide-angle view and one directly above his crib. They're only useful when he's in his room and I'm not creeping on my wife throughout the day. We've talked a lot since this post blew up. There were some tears but a lot more laughs. We've agreed to work on things and she's set up alarms now to wake up earlier. I didn't mean to paint her in a bad light because she really is a fantastic mom. We're in this together and we're figuring it out. Let it too, clearing up more details. A couple more things. My wife does not have narcolepsy. I said the meds she's on are usually used to treat narcolepsy or ADHD, but that's not her diagnosis. Also, she doesn't have ADHD. Lastly, I didn't realize how quick people are to add their own details and twist the story. I shared what's going on in our lives and the responses helped us work through some things. But wow, y'all really ran with this. AITA for crashing my wife's 30th birthday party? My wife just turned 30 this week, and for context, I'm a 26M. We've always had a strong bond, and I love her more than anything. Over the past year, I've gotten closer to her childhood best friend, Jimmy 28M. I didn't really know him that well before, but now he feels like an older brother to me. My wife always throws these amazing, all-out birthday parties for me, and I wanted to return the favor for her big three to zero. She's more on the quiet, introverted side, so I figured a private romantic surprise would be perfect, just me and her. I thought I'd make it extra special by learning how to paint, because it's her favorite art form. 
I wanted to surprise her with something I created myself. Jimmy's a super talented artist, so for the last two months, I've been taking secret lessons from him. My wife noticed me hanging out with Jimmy more than usual, but I kept things vague because, duh, I didn't want to ruin the surprise. She's made a few comments but never seemed upset. Fast forward to her birthday. I planned the whole day. I decorated the house, made a cake of thank you, YouTube tutorials, got her flowers, the works. She was supposed to come home around 5.30, but as the hours ticked by, she didn't show. I called Jimmy to see if he knew where she was, but he hadn't seen her either. Finally, I checked her location, and she was at a restaurant with friends, friends I'd never met before. I think they're from her work. Here's the thing, my wife never goes out like that. She's super low-key, so this whole situation felt off. When I got to the restaurant, she was sitting there, kind of sad-looking, eating birthday cake with these random friends. No smiles, no energy. I thought maybe she was upset because she didn't know about the surprise I had waiting at home, so I walked over and told her we should leave. We grabbed her thins, and on the Yuba ride back, she didn't say a word. At home, when she saw the setup, the decorations, and the gift I had worked so hard on, she started crying. Since that night, she's been sleeping on the couch, avoiding me. My wife hasn't talked to Jimmy either. I told my mom about the whole thing, and she called me an asshole. I don't know why. AITA? To answer some questions? She never told me she was making plans with friends. She didn't even tell me she had new friends in the first place. She was out with friends that I've never met before. She doesn't really have friends, so this is new slash weird. I never got to give her my present. My wife doesn't normally have plans. My wife doesn't like loud environments where people talk a lot. It's overwhelming for her. She looked sad at the restaurant and wasn't animated at all. When I said, Let's go home and took her hand, she got up immediately and started packing up to leave. I didn't tell her about the surprise. I wanted to get her in a better mood. It was Jimmy's idea not to tell her anything, even that I'm taking art lessons. I'm a blabbermouth, and he said that not tipping her off to anything would be the best way she'd be totally surprised and happy. But I screwed it all up. Looking back, maybe I should have clued her in on the surprise, but I really thought she'd love it. I didn't expect her to make other plans, she never does. I just wanted to do something special for her 30th, and now I'm sitting here feeling like I messed up big time. Was I wrong for crashing her party and bringing her home, or was it reasonable considering the surprise I had planned? AITA for helping my disabled sister get dressed even though my girlfriend is jealous? I'm 24 living with my twin sister Elena, who's been blind since birth, and my girlfriend Mia, who's 22. I've been helping Elena with things like picking out her clothes and helping her dress since we were 12. It's just something I've always done, especially since our parents were both full-time workers, focused on providing for us and taking care of our younger siblings. It's never been an issue for me because it's part of how we've always operated. My relationship with Mia is great for the most part, but the only real fights we've had have revolved around her jealousy toward Elena, which is something that honestly blindsided me. Elena writes romantic stories, and while I don't have time to read them, I'm proud of her for doing what she loves and making money from it. For a long time, she didn't think she'd have a career, so this is a big win for her. But here's where things get complicated. Mia came to me recently and admitted she was feeling jealous. She asked if she could take over helping Elena dress, which immediately felt like a bad idea to me, because it would make Elena super uncomfortable. I've always been the one helping her with this, and she's consistent about only wanting either me or our mom to help. When I asked Mia why this was suddenly an issue, she pointed out a scene in Elena's latest book where the female lead, who's also blind, gets turned on by her boyfriend helping her dress. Mia made it sound like Elena was low-key fantasizing about me or something, which honestly felt like a slap in the face. I get where Mia's coming from with the insecurity, but accusing Elena of having some kind of inappropriate fantasy about me is unfair and just plain wrong. First of all, Elena's fully clothed when I help her, and it's not like it's some long, drawn-out process. It takes maybe 10 minutes, tops. Plus, this is something we've been doing since we were kids. There's nothing weird or sexual about it. Elena's just not comfortable having anyone else help her. Now Mia's accusing me of emotionally cheating on her with Elena, which just feels over the top. She wants me to either stop helping Elena or send her back to live with our parents, 
which is a no-go for me, I would never kick Ellen out. She's my sister, and I've been there for her our whole lives. We just do normal sibling stuff, talk, hang out, watch movies together. I don't understand how Mia's twisted that into emotional cheating. What blows my mind is that Mia's convinced two of our mutual friends and my dad that she's right. My mom, though, is firmly in my corner, as she knows the dynamic between me and Elena better than anyone. So, here I am, trying to figure out if I'm the asshole for standing my ground. Because to me, this whole thing feels like Mia's letting jealousy cloud her judgment. But now, I'm second-guessing everything because of all the people taking her side. Am I wrong here? Edit I talked with Ellen about this post and she allowed me to share more regarding her health, but I won't be naming anything. Ellen can't walk, although she can feel her legs, and her body overall is more weaker and fragile than an average female body would be. Therefore, everything she does, she does it using her arms, and it is very tiring, so keep in mind that she's limited by her stamina as well. My job is basically carry her around to the bathroom, to the bathtub and to her wheelchair, she can use the bathroom and bath alone. We arrange things so she can have the as much privacy and independence as possible. But after all this she's too exhausted to finish dressing herself alone. She's doing physiotherapy to increase her strength and stamina, so in the future she will be able to do more than she does today. Following the advice of many of you, I meet with Mia to discuss our relationship yesterday. Mia said she was sorry for exaggerating and getting our friends involved in the fight. She promised she never will involve other people in our problems again, and later on she explained the real situation to them. But we also discussed what was making her feel jealous, and what could be done about it. During the last two weeks, we had to meet a deadline in my work, which forced everybody to work three extra hours per day, we get paid for that, but it's very consuming. Obviously, Mia was receiving less attention and affection, and I had been a bit asshole myself for not realizing she was upset about it and not explaining myself to her. Although now we both agreed on a minimum amount of quality time and sex we will be investing on our relationship, so no one feels neglected. I read the most relevant parts of Ilana's novel, as many recommended, during the last days, and we talked about it as well. The female lead is a girl with essentially the same disabilities as Ilana. There's a scene where the female lead gets turned on by having her love interest help her to dress slash undress, and they end up sleeping together. After that, the female lead caress her boyfriend's hair, Elena caress my hair sometimes, the boyfriend looks vaguely like me, same hair, skin, and eyes color. But he's different if you consider more precise details. Before we talked, Mia was worried about the coincidences between the novel and real life. But after I showed her the comments of diverse Redditors, who write, Affirming that they also write their fantasies based on real-life experience, she got more relaxed. I also promised her that if Elena ever exhibits strange behavior, I will let her know. Besides, Mia will start spending time with Elena helping her cook, since both of them like cooking, Elena is okay with that, and I don't have time to help her every day. Last month Mia bought an electric oven with a digital display, she could have bought a, way more, cheaper gas oven, but that one Elena wouldn't be able to use alone. Please keep in mind that there's more about Mia than her one overreacting mistake that I shared here with you. I love her and she has great qualities that I can't list here. Comment Imaginary sir But you do realize she probably don't have so much social life or close friends to refer in her book. We humans tend to use the things we hear or experienced, it is normal. You would want your partner to hug you, kiss you on cheek, and it could turn you on, but not with your siblings. Something that turns you on with your love, one, doesn't mean it turns you on with your siblings, too. I think it's weirder to think it would turn on all the time. She could just enjoy the caressing hair and want her so to do, too, it's normal, she just wanted to be loved, cared by her loved one, it's normal. And the fact that the character looking like the op doesn't mean she have fantasy of him. We tend to feel attraction similar people to our caretaker, cause it feels more safe and our old gene brain says that what healthy spouse should look like. You know the saying that, GFS looks similar to mother, or girls find guys like their father, it's not like we fantasizing our parents and want to fuck them. Patient Act Glad it worked out between you two. I still think you should confront your sister about the novels, 
and have an adult conversation about not only boundaries, but the possibility that she could want something more than a brother to help her. Also in the future, if you ever decide to have a family, you'll probably need professional help, and Elena will need more privacy, she's a human too, she needs that. Has she ever talked to you about wanting to experience love, dates? Imaginary Sir I don't understand why people are so obsessed with the fact that the character from the novel looks like her brother, we tend to feel more attracted to people who look like our caregiver, or have similar character to our caregiver I'm sure everybody heard the boys usually find girls similar looking to their mom and girls find guys like their dad it's not like all those people want to fuck their parents or we don't get turned on by the touch of our mom dad or siblings but we can get turned on by our so AITA for pulling my daughter out of dance because her mom ruined it my little girl is five and she's been dancing for about a year now she's super into tap and ballet which I think is great because it makes her happy. Her mom, though, was a gymnast back in the day and had high hopes that our daughter would follow in her footsteps. She really wanted her to get into gymnastics, but after trying it out, our daughter wasn't feeling it at all. She was all about dancing instead, and while I thought my wife would roll with it, it's clear this has been bothering her more than I realize. Now, instead of just letting our daughter enjoy her dance classes, my wife's been making things tense. She's basically alienated herself from the other moms and even the dance instructor. She keeps saying she doesn't think our daughter is being used to her full potential and that she butts heads with the instructor a lot. She thinks that because of her gymnastics background, the instructor should listen to her and apply her suggestions. My wife's super competitive, and I do admire that drive in her, but honestly it feels like it's turning into a bigger problem. The tension between her and the instructor has gotten so bad, and she's even brought it up to the other moms, comparing how their daughters are treated versus ours. Naturally, the other moms weren't thrilled about that, and now it's like the whole experience has been ruined for our daughter. Because of this drama, the other moms have started excluding our daughter from playdates and fun outings. The girls all talk about these get-togethers during class, and it's gotten to the point where my daughter comes home in tears, asking why she doesn't get to hang out with her friends anymore. I sat down with my wife to talk about it, but she just brushed it off, saying our daughter will make new friends when she starts kindergarten and it's not a big deal. But here's the thing, this is a studio where she plans for our daughter to be for years. I don't understand how my wife can't see that her constant conflict with the other parents is causing our daughter to feel left out. She told me the other moms are rude and that she'll always stand up for herself and our daughter, even if I won't. She even told me I need to stop being scared of the other moms. But this isn't about fear, it's about how our daughter is feeling right now. It's gotten so bad that my daughter doesn't even want to go to class anymore. She cries when I pick her up after work, saying she hates going to dance. The funny thing is, the parents and instructors are totally nice to me when I go to pick her up. One mom even invited my daughter to her kid's birthday party but specifically asked if I could take her. When I told my wife about it, she completely lost it. She said it was weird that the mom didn't want her there and said our daughter couldn't go. I told her she was being ridiculous, but she wouldn't let up. To make things worse, the party ended up being on a day I had to work, so I couldn't take her. I was at my wit's end. My daughter kept saying she hated the studio and didn't want to dance anymore, so I made a decision. The next time I went to pick her up, after seeing her in tears again, I pulled the plug and disenrolled her. I couldn't stand seeing her so miserable and it was clear that something had to change. When I went home and told my wife she got mad and said I'm an evil asshole, and that I should have spoken to her first before doing that. I told her that she is the one that ruined our daughter's experience with her fighting the parents and instructors, and alienating our daughter from the other girls. She kept saying I'm the only one wrong, and that I'm an asshole since it's the best studio in town, and others have wait lists for months. AITA? Update. A quick recap is that my wife got into conflict with instructors and parents at our daughter's studio, causing her to be alienated, and in return I unenrolled my unhappy daughter from classes. I felt a bit conflicted if I did the right thing, but after reading your responses I felt content, I made the right choice. I even showed her comments, but she refused to look at my phone for long. I thought after getting mad my wife would be able to get over this and see my side, but unfortunately things became very bad. She told me a week after she was going to enroll our daughter back in gymnastics like she had initially wanted and my daughter overheard this saying she didn't want to and started crying. 
My wife completely ignored this and went on talking to me saying she's sick of me enabling quitting and that our daughter needs a better role model. I was sick to watch her ignore our crying daughter and told her that we already tried gymnastics and our daughter didn't like it and she said it will be different this time and that her word is final. We kept arguing about this and she went on to enroll our daughter into gymnastics again and started taking her while I was at work. I was furious that she couldn't respect my wishes, but she said I wasn't respecting her. I told my wife that she has control issues and is trying to live through our daughter, and this made her extremely upset. I recommended therapy like a lot of commenters said too, and this set her off. She started accusing me of infidelity, saying that the mother at my daughter's old studio, who specifically asked that I bring my daughter and not my wife is the reason I'm starting, issues for no reason with her, and that she found it weird that she specially asked for me and not her and that means something more. I said that's because all the moms hate her and didn't want her around and she cursed at me horribly saying disgusting things I can't type, but I'm shocked I married someone so vile. She wasn't always like this, she was a kind caring woman before this whole gymnastics slash ballet fiasco started and her tiger mom side came out. I know it's crazy and I wish I could say different, but I'm seeing this heading towards divorce. We haven't slept in the same bed for three weeks and she won't talk to me about anything other than the house, our daughter, and the dog. I'm embarrassed to tell anyone this because I find it so bizarre and weird that so much conflict has stemmed from something as innocent as sports. Comment Just to piggyback, while it seems like a really huge leap to assume someone is cheating just because they threw out an infidelity comment. Everything else together just doesn't fit. Someone who is kind and caring doesn't just become completely vile and act as if they hate you out of the blue or over issues that could normally be pretty easily solved. The way she is acting is so over the top for the situation that there must be something going on behind the scenes you don't know about. There's a word for it but I've forgotten it, but people who have fallen out of love or are cheating and want to break up but can't bring themselves to do it will sort of just sabotage the relationship by acting out like this, in disproportionate ways, making big deals out of small situations, being distant on purpose, in order to eventually alienate the partner so much they initiate to the breakup for them. It kind of sounds like this. Anyway. Definitely ente. And a parent that's more into the activity they're forcing their kid to do and getting more out of it than the kid is, is not healthy for the kid. So while it may hurt to fight against your wife, it'll hurt a lot more if you don't fight for your daughter, so just keep that in mind. Whatever you decide to do, you're doing it for your daughter. This was my thought too. You hurt her by telling her she is so disliked. She's doing what I call scatter blasting in retribution because she can't imagine not being adored. She is picking on you with anything and everything she can think of, to attack with, rather than sticking to a one-shot issue. This is generally a sign of mental health problems, compounded by the determination to have your daughter in girly activities, which are often associated with the pretty popular girls. There's a lot going on here, and I'm guessing that a peek at her childhood might answer many questions. It's not right, but it might explain. Meanwhile, I'm not sure about her cheating. Scatter blasters will often go for what they believe will really hurt you. Go for blood, no matter how outrageous. Scatter blasters are also trying to drive you away. Their insecurities mean they get to dump you first, and therefore are a victim and a one. You should proactively protect yourself and your daughter. AITA for telling my sister her life choices aren't our parents' responsibility? I'm 42M and I've got a younger sister, Sarah, 33F. Our parents, while comfortable, were never rolling in money. Growing up, our dad ran his own small business and our mom was an office manager. We had a good life, but it's not like we were swimming in cash. They made it clear early on that they'd pay for our education, college and grad school if we wanted it, but only if we used it for school. They weren't just handing out free cash for houses or vacations. They always said they worked hard to save and once they retired, they were going to enjoy their lives, travel, and spend their money on themselves. They even said we shouldn't expect much of an inheritance because they intended to really enjoy the last part of their lives. To me, that always seemed fair. Now I took their offer to heart. I got my degree in electrical engineering, later got my MBA, and I'm doing well now. I'm married to an attorney and between us, we've built a good life. My parents' plan worked out for me. 
But Sarah? Not so much. After high school, instead of taking them up on the college offer, she decided she wanted to travel and find herself. She asked our parents for the money to fund her trips, but they stuck to their word and said no. They told her she was 18 and could earn her own money for that. She didn't like that and went no contact with all of us for a few years. She popped back into our lives around three years ago. We've been cordial, but we're not close. About two years ago, she asked our parents for money to put down on a house because she was tired of renting. Once again, they refused and reminded her that they'd still pay for her education if she wanted to go back to school, but they weren't handing out cash for anything else. Sarah came to me, complaining about how unfair they were being, but I was on their side. I told her the college offer was still there, and it wasn't too late to get a degree and a better paying job. She didn't like my answer, so she distanced herself from me after that. Fast forward to now. Next year our grandparents are celebrating a major anniversary in another country. My family, me, my wife and our two kids and my parents are planning to go, along with relatives from all over. It's a huge event, but it's not cheap, around $20,000 and for the four of us when you factor in plane tickets, hotels and other costs. Sarah, who's married but doesn't have kids, can't afford the trip, so she asked our parents to pay for her and her husband to attend. Once again, they said no, but reiterated they'd still pay for her education if she wanted it. Sarah lost it and blew up at them. She then called me, complaining about how she's living in a crappy apartment, driving barely working cars and has no savings, and how our parents won't help. That's when I told her straight up, she made her choices and she's responsible for where she is in life. I reminded her again that our parents are incredibly generous to still offer to pay for her college, but that doesn't seem to be what she wants. After that, she hung up on me, and I think we're heading back to no contact again. I wanted to clear up a few things that seemed to be coming up a lot. Growing up, we weren't wealthy. We were solidly middle class. Our dad worked seven days a week, 12 hours a day to make his business work. They always drove used cars until they were too expensive to fix, and only a couple of years ago did my dad finally buy my mom their first brand new car for their anniversary, a Toyota Camry. We were never a 1% family. As for my sister, she doesn't have any learning disabilities, and she was a decent student in school, a solid B student, nothing special but definitely capable. No one's brought up trade school, so I'm not sure if that's something she'd consider or if our parents would support it. But my dad, being a small business owner, always valued making your own way. A couple of years ago, he even offered Sarah money to start her own business. He told her to create a business plan and pitch it to the bank, and if the bank was willing to loan her money, he'd match the loan interest-free. She never followed through on it. Sarah is not a bad person. She's actually pretty normal. The issue is, she's always had a rebellious streak and would do the opposite of what people advised just to get a reaction. It was kind of cute when she was a teenager, but now, in her thirties, it hasn't really served her well. As for the trip, it's expensive because it's to the other side of the world and will take place during peak tourist season, meaning plane tickets are around $2,500 and per person. Factor in hotels, food and rental cars, and it quickly adds up. And for those curious, while my wife is a great attorney, we're not living in some lavish lifestyle. She's not the type of lawyer you see on TV with private jets and million-dollar homes. We live comfortably, but we're not super rich. She also drives a Camry, just like my mom. Featured Comment Participant 1 Like, they're still offering to help her in a tremendous and meaningful way. A full ride through grad school would radically change her life. Participant 2 Not everyone excels in college. She could take the money, go to college and leave with an expensive art degree, and still be exactly where she started. Up and his parents are NTA, but I'm curious if something more like a trade school would benefit the sister. There are other schooling options than four-year degree in grad school that could help. Participant 3 It doesn't sound like she's tried to negotiate anything about schooling. I would interpret paying for a four-year degree in grad school as willing to pay for education and at least ask if going to tech was on the table. Participant 4 
Yeah, given the parents' stance on schooling I get the feeling they would gladly pay for a trade school or equivalent kind or training. It seems to be about setting her up with skills to get a job that can support her. I don't see them saying no if she asks them to pay for beauty school or electrician training or something like that. Participant 5 Their whole plan was to set up their kids for life so they wouldn't be hounded for money. How ironic. Participant 6 I don't know it seems like we're being given the absolute bare bones of the overall situation. Maybe she did try to negotiate for a different arrangement. Maybe she simply isn't academically inclined whatsoever. Maybe she wanted to do a particular degree that the parents disagreed with and refused to fund. Going NC from the entire family for 12 years over this one thing seems extreme, which suggests that there was actually a lot more going on than Op as put in the post, possibly more than Op is aware of. Edit. Look, I get it. She may well just be an entitled bratty person. But if IITA has shown us anything, it's that when the op only gives the very barest of details, it's often because more context would show that the situation clearly isn't how they've described it, and they're deliberately trying to skew the judgment. Participant 7 I mean, you're making some big assumptions there. She could just be a petty person and not bother with her family because they don't do what she wants. My brother is just like this only ever contacts you when he wants something, and other than that will never reply. AITA for telling my sister to back off my parenting style or leave my house? I'm a 44-year-old single dad, raising my 14-year-old daughter. I've been doing this solo ever since her mom passed away 10 years ago. Now from day one, I decided I wasn't going to be that strict, overbearing parent. My childhood was a nightmare of constant rules and control, thanks to my own strict upbringing, and I'm not about to put my daughter through that mess. Therapy isn't cheap, you know? Anyway, about two weeks ago, my sister's house flooded because they found out the foundation was completely rotted. So, being the good brother, I offered her and her family a place to stay. They moved into my finished basement, which has its own entrance, kitchen, living room, and everything. It's a pretty sweet setup, honestly. She came with her husband and her three sons, 16, 13, and 9. For the most part, we've been doing our own thing. They live downstairs, we live upstairs, and we hang out together for a few hours every day. All was going fine until my sister started throwing shade at my parenting style. That's where the trouble really started. See, I don't have a million rules for my daughter. She's a good kid. As long as I know where she is and she's back home by 9 p.m., she's free to go wherever. I don't micromanage what she wears as long as it follows the school dress code and I don't make her stick to some crazy strict bedtime. I don't check her homework either, I trust her to handle it. She's earned my trust and I'm raising her to be independent. I want her to learn to self-regulate and she's doing great. She maintains a solid B average at school and guess what? I don't hover over her to make sure she gets it done. She's got a lock on her door and I always ask permission before entering her room. And if she doesn't want to eat what I cook, she's free to make something else or order takeout, as long as she gives me a heads up and doesn't order in more than twice a week. Also, she's got her own money, so if she orders in, that's on her. Now, let's talk about my sister's parenting style. She runs her house like a military camp. Her kids have a strict routine no closed doors unless they're changing and she checks their electronics constantly. They barely go anywhere because she keeps them on lockdown. If they don't eat what she cooks, they go hungry. And don't get me started on the bedtime rules. Her 16-year-old has a 9 p.m. bedtime on school nights and 10 p.m. on weekends. I mean, come on. I don't agree with her style, but I've kept my mouth shut because I figure, her kids, her rules. But now she's coming at me saying I need to start imposing more rules on my daughter because her kids are noticing the difference and rebelling. And I was like, hold up my house, my rules, if your kids are acting out, that's on you, not me. Then things escalated. She started getting all dramatic, saying how her boys keep sneaking upstairs to hang out with my daughter and since her bedroom door is always locked, she's convinced they're hiding something from her. But honestly? All they're doing is hanging out and enjoying some freedom away from her constant surveillance. My nephews aren't up to anything shady, they just want some privacy for once in their lives. It all came to a head when she flat out demanded I tighten the leash on my daughter to make her life easier. 
That's when I told her, look, you either keep your opinions about my parenting to yourself, or you can go find somewhere else to live. Now she's telling everyone I'm an asshole for threatening her with homelessness, and that my relaxed parenting is only adding more stress to her already tough situation. She claims I don't understand how hard it is for her to manage her kids when they're constantly comparing themselves to their cousin. But here's the thing, I'm not going to let her style of parenting dictate how I raise my kid. We didn't have a power struggle before she moved in, and I'm not about to start one now just to make her life easier. Some context on why things blew up. The real catalyst for all this was when my sister realized her boys were using the upstairs floor as their escape route. They know they're not supposed to go up there without permission, but they've been sneaking up to hang with my daughter. My sister's convinced they're up to no good because my daughter's door is always locked, but the truth is, they're just enjoying a bit of freedom and privacy. She can't handle that. A few extra points people asked me to clear up. My daughter doesn't have a bedtime because I want her to learn to self-regulate. And yeah, she struggled a bit at first, but she eventually figured out how important sleep is. Now, she's got a healthy sleep schedule she manages on her own. My daughter's an entrepreneur. She runs an online shop where she crochets all kinds of stuff, plushies, characters, you name it. Over the summer, it was mostly bikinis, but she decided that was too much work for too little pay. Either way, she's been killing it. She even made over $15 in K last year and has to start filing taxes this year. I'm proud of her hustle. My daughter's grades? She holds a B average, and I don't check her homework because I want her to do it for herself, not because someone's breathing down her neck. She's a good kid, and I trust her. My sister's losing it, though. She thinks the way I raise my daughter is causing chaos in her household, but honestly, I think her kids are just tired of the constant control. They see what life could be like if they had more freedom, and they're pushing back. Am I really the asshole here for setting boundaries with my sister? I offered her a place to stay, but that doesn't mean I'm going to change the way I raise my kid just because she can't handle her own. Edit, so I did end up telling my dad and Hannah what went down with Grace's boyfriend, and they were totally on my side. They said I didn't do anything wrong and that Isaac was out of line. My dad even told me Isaac isn't welcome in our house anymore which honestly, I'm cool with. My sister's still mad, but I'm standing my ground. My house, my rules. Comment. Orc 8. Ante. It sounds like you and your daughter have a great family style. If your sister's only problem is that her sons want more flexibility, then she should look at changing her style, not yours. In terms of her stress, she should perhaps think about how your generosity and letting her family live in your house has reduced her stress. Emerald Blue Zen This right here. Op's parenting style sounds right on point and it's working well for his daughter. Sis needs to understand that he will not and should not change his way of parenting just for her to feel less stress. That's 100% not a valid reason. It's not like his daughter is running around doing drugs or something. She has her options, either put up with a bit of stress due to their different parenting styles or be homeless and that it'd be way more stressful in today. Dr. Whoop, 87. Up sounds like amazing parent, he's going to have a great relationship with his daughter while sister will probably have a strained one when her boys grow up, probably like Up does with his parents. Generational trauma sucks and anybody who breaks it is a hero to me. A Segirl, 1985. Right? He sounds like he's doing wonderfully. It's so nice to see a good, caring, understanding parent on here for a change. And it, you are doing everything right. She's doing nothing but ensuring her kids want as little to do with her as possible when they grow up, and she's also really setting them up to fail when they actually are on their own, because they won't have the skills and know how to limit and moderate themselves, like your daughter will. Yellow Dragon I've seen it said in a few places that strict parents raise sneaky kids. It was true for me and I'll bet it's true for the sister. The thing is, it's just as stressful for the kids as it is for the sister, as they have to be on their toes all the time, thinking ahead, anticipating her next intrusion and how they will work around it, double-checking and remembering if they are hid something that so mom won't find it, stressing that they forgot, and figuring out new ways to hide things as mom inevitably figures out one of the old ones. Having a locked door they can get behind and just let themselves relax for a while is extremely important to those kids, I'll bet it is the only time they can truly relax in a space where she can't get at them. 
Please continue to defend your daughter's right to do this. She needs it. And so do they. AITA for telling my wife her crypto losses aren't my problem. I30M didn't come from much, grew up in a poor family, and even started off my adult life with about $300,000 and in student debt. My wife, on the other hand, comes from a family swimming in money. When we got married, she had a net worth of $31 and million. Yeah, you read that right. Now, right from the jump, she made it clear that her inheritance and her wealth weren't going to be something I could touch. We signed a prenup that basically said her money stays her money, and I can't touch it even if she passes away. Like if she dies, I wouldn't even get the typical spousal third of her estate. It'd all go to her siblings or any future kids. My debt and our incomes were also split. Honestly, it wasn't a huge deal for me. I'm not here to mooch off her. I was determined to make my own money, and I agreed to it all. As a man, I wanted to pull myself up by my bootstraps. One thing that actually worked out in my favor was that since our incomes were separate, I could keep what I earned. I've always made a little more than her, so it wasn't a big problem overall. Fast forward five years into this marriage, and I still don't have anywhere near her wealth, like, not even close. But here's where things get interesting. Her investments have been tanking. She decided to throw her money into crypto, despite me telling her it was a bad idea. And we all know how volatile crypto can be, right? Well, she went all in on this cryptocurrency called Monero. This year alone, Monero's down 47%. And to make things worse, about 5% of her assets were tied up in FTX, the exchange that just went bankrupt. So, she's taken a major hit. Her net worth has dropped from $31 in million to around $18 in million. Yeah, she's still rich, like, a super rich, but she's been losing big time, and it's stressing her out. Now, I don't touch crypto. I've been investing in index funds, much safer in the long term. Sure, they've taken a hit this year too, but historically, they always bounce back. Meanwhile, with crypto, especially Monero, there are no guarantees. The other day, I came home to find her crying after she found out about the FTX bankruptcy. She'd lost a chunk of her money, and honestly, I did feel bad. I told her, that's rough, and I meant it I wasn't being sarcastic or anything. Then I went upstairs to change. When I came back down, she was still upset, saying I was being too nonchalant about the whole thing. She was going on and on about how I didn't care that she lost all that money. That's when I pointed out that she's still sitting on $18 a million. Like, let's not forget, she's a still incredibly wealthy despite some poor financial decisions. And you know, she could stop investing in crypto anytime she wanted to. I mean, she's the one who wanted to keep our finances separate. So why is she suddenly acting like I need to help fix her problem? She wasn't happy with my response, and now we're kinda in this weird place where she's acting like I'm the bad guy for not being more sympathetic. But like, what am I supposed to do here? She made these decisions, and I warned her beforehand that crypto wasn't a safe bet. Edit. Some people are asking about the prenup, and yeah, we both had lawyers. Hers was way more expensive than mine. But I wasn't tripping about it. I'm not trying to rely on her money anyway. The prenup just confirmed that we're keeping our finances separate, and honestly, I was cool with that. I'm not here to get a piece of her family's wealth. I've got my own financial goals and I'm focused on those. Just to clarify, she uh, chose to invest in Monero and stick with crypto. I had no say in that. She's been doing her thing, and it's not like I'm cheering for her losses or anything. I just don't think I need to play the role of her financial advisor when we've made it clear that our money is separate. So, I uh, for telling her that her investing losses aren't my problem. I get that losing money sucks, but we've always had separate finances, and I don't see why this should suddenly change things. AITA for refusing to pay for my stepdaughter's tuition because she wants to be a doctor? My wife and I have been married for a solid decade. She's a stay-at-home wife and we don't have kids of our own, but she has a daughter, Sarah, from a previous relationship. Now, Sarah and I get along fine most of the time. She's in college now, junior year, pursuing a biology degree because she's had this long-time dream of becoming a doctor. 
She's been talking about it since her mom and I first met. But here's the catch, she's just not a strong student, especially in the subjects that matter most for med school. Sarah's been struggling with her science and math classes, failing her biology one course initially, only to retake it for a B, she's made C as in higher level biology and chemistry classes. Sure, she's pulling as in non-science and non-math courses, which is padding her GPA to a 3.2. But, as far as I've researched, med schools want to see top grades in science and math. I mean, we're talking serious competition, and with Sarah's current grades I don't see her getting into any med school. I don't know any doctors personally, so I did some digging online. From what I found, a high GPA in science and math is non-negotiable. I also looked into nursing schools as a possible alternative to med school, but even those require higher grades than what Sarah's been managing. When I brought this up with my wife, she wasn't having it. She argued that med schools look at more than just grades, Sarah's got a strong volunteer background and genuinely cares about people. My wife believes Sarah will shine in interviews, but I don't see how that'll matter if she can't meet the basic GPA requirements. So, I decided to have a talk with Sarah over Thanksgiving break. I suggested she consider switching to a more realistic major, something that might actually lead to a decent job. Sarah got upset and ran straight to her mom, and things escalated quickly. We ended up in a big argument, and yeah, I'll admit, I lost my cool. I flat out told them both that I'm not going to keep wasting money on something that I think she's destined to fail at. I said I wasn't going to pay for next semester's tuition unless she changes her major to something more practical. Now, I feel guilty. I'm not made of money, and I can't keep throwing cash at a dream that seems like it's slipping further and further away with every semester. Am I wrong for wanting her to switch gears before it's too late? The main reason I'm pushing for her to change majors is that I've seen firsthand how useless a biology degree can be without an advanced degree to back it up. I have a few friends who got biology degrees and didn't pursue further education, and none of them have jobs remotely related to their field. One of them had to go back to school for something else, one's been a receptionist for two decades, and another's an assistant manager at Lowe's. While those jobs are perfectly respectable, none of them needed to spend four years studying biology to get there. I'm still willing to support her financially if she chooses a major that'll actually help her land a decent job. I just don't want her ending up in a situation where she's spent years pursuing a degree she can't use. AITA for uninviting my mom to our wedding after she invited my fiancé's estranged father. I, 34M, am getting married to my fiancé, 29F, in two weeks, after 13 years of friendship and four years of dating. Honestly, our relationship has been amazing and wedding planning has been a breeze. My fiancé is super close with my parents, especially since her own mom passed away last year. They've kind of taken her in as one of their own, which she really appreciates. Now, here's where things get messy. My fiancé has been no contact with her dad since she was 15. He was a major factor in her depression and low self-esteem growing up, and it took her years to heal from all the emotional damage. She's in a good place now and neither of us ever considered inviting him to the wedding. It was a firm boundary, and my fiancé was crystal clear about it. My mom, however, just couldn't let it go. She's a retired psychologist and has some experience with parent-child reunifications. She's been on this mission, thinking my fiancé Anitza to reconnect with her dad, especially now that her mom is gone. Both my fiancé and I have told her countless times that's not happening, but she didn't take the hint. She doesn't even know my fiancé's father yet still feels like she knows what's best for her. Well, the other night, we were having dinner with my family, and my mom dropped the bombshell. She had tracked down my fiancé's estranged father, met up with him, and invited him to our wedding. She was so proud of herself, like she had done something amazing. Meanwhile, the rest of my family was horrified. They all know the history, and how much this guy hurt my fiancé. Somehow, my fiancé stayed calm. She told my mom how hurtful and inappropriate it was, how it broke her trust completely. I was furious and ended up uninviting my mom right then and there. We left, and when we got home, my fiancé finally broke down. Now, my mom's been calling me nonstop, crying, saying she didn't mean to cause all this drama. My dad, who thinks what she did was wrong, still thinks I should talk to her and hear her out. My siblings also feel like uninviting her was too much. But honestly... All I can think about is the pain she caused my fiancé. She feels so unsafe now, 
that we're considering canceling the wedding altogether, just to avoid the possibility of her father showing up. I'm furious at my mom and don't know if I even want to hear her out. So, AITA for uninviting my mom after she completely ignored our boundaries and invited my fiancé's estranged dad to the wedding. I met up with my dad earlier today. He's genuinely sorry for what my mom did, and admitted that he shouldn't have pushed me to hear her out right away. I told him this situation isn't just about me my fiancé is the one who was hurt the most, and she's the one who gets to decide how we move forward. My dad even offered to help cover any additional costs we might have if we have to rearrange things. Both of my siblings called separately to apologize to my fiancé too, which I think is a good start. But honestly, I'm still not ready to talk to my mom. My fiancé's brother-in-law suggested we might want to move the wedding up, like do it sooner and keep the venue. We're still working out the details but it might actually be a good plan. At least then we won't have to cancel the whole thing. The biggest thing is, we are married. In the end, my wife's sister and B.I.L. saved the day. Originally the wedding was on the 18th at B.I.L.'s restaurant, that was the date and place where we went from friends to dating five years ago. On the day of the op, wife went to see her sister, they suggested having the wedding a week earlier, on the 11th. It felt like the best option, B.I.L. was willing to do the work, because wife is like a sister to him. His team and him got a generous tip from my dad. Wife is I.L. B.I.L. and I told all the guests, save my family of the date change. Wife didn't want to tell people why. Amazingly, everyone made it work except for three people. My family was told the morning of the wedding, just to make sure wife's father would not have time to come to the wedding, as he lives 15 hours away from us. My family didn't complain because they knew that they messed up. It was all a bit stressful, but my wife felt like a spy on a mission and had fun with it. I was glad to see her get excited again. And there was no sign of her father at the wedding, so I guess mom finally listened. In the week before the wedding, we met my family to talk several times. These were long, long talks. Why my mom did it? She just thought she knew better. No excuse other than arrogance. They all apologized. My wife said, one family torn apart by her father's actions was enough. She insisted that they were invited. So that was that. However, we made it clear that contact with her father would be punished much harder in the future, especially when it comes to children. It's forgiven but not forgotten, I guess. As to what wife's father found out from my mom, apparently not much. He knew a bunch already, from my wife's eldest brother. Mom filled in gaps. That brother is the only of my wife's siblings that was still in touch with their father. Brother and wife were on thin ice before that already for many, but different reasons. Yes, we let that brother attend the wedding, mostly because we didn't want more drama. But we'll tackle that when wife feels ready to do so. We did have a honeymoon to get to first. All in all, I think we are fine. Wife is very hurt still, more so by her brother's actions now. With my family, we'll work on it. The imminent threat is dealt with, now we start fixing the damage. Through it all, my wife was amazingly calm and reflected. It made me much more grateful that I get to be with her. Comment Aurelissa Ravens Congrats I love your wife's comment, one family torn up by my father's actions is enough, and that being the impetus for moving forward with forgiveness. May you have many years of wedded bliss. As someone who's been happily married for 23 years, we have two rules. One, never go to bed angry with each other as sometimes you just need to say, I love you, and we'll see how we feel about things when we're not tired, typically, you forgot why you were fighting in the first place. Two, never sleep apart because you're upset with one another. Cracks in a marriage are like a sidewalk, in that they only get bigger over time, so you need to provide constant maintenance. Again, congrats. And again, and a. Economy voice. Respectfully, the never go to bed angry advice isn't always good. I've been married 16 years and my parents nearly 50, we all agree that sometimes it's better to pause the argument and go to bed, the next morning, cooler slash calmer heads prevail, and things didn't get said when we were tired and heated. I'd rather us go to bed angry and resolve it in the morning than have anyone say something they'd regret. My husband is the same way. Usually things look much less fraught in the morning. Every couple and person is different. My best advice is for a couple to learn how they each handle conflict and come up with their own conflict management plan. If they have an understand of how they want to address disagreements, it'll be easier to manage fairly when they happen. I'm glad your plan works for you. Artistic. Respectfully, the never go to bed angry advice isn't always good. Lol, I agree with this. My husband and I have been married over 20 years, 
And when we first got married, that's the advice I heard from so many people. So we tried it. But I get exhausted when we argue, and we would try to work things out until 2M sometimes, and we just get more and more frustrated. And I'm not a reasonable person when I'm exhausted, I'm sorry but that's the truth. Finally we admitted to each other that, don't go to bed angry didn't work for us, so we would just go to bed even if we were really angry, and things always seemed better in the morning. So yeah, we learned that you don't have to finish an argument before bedtime, lol. At least not for us. Maybe it works for other people though, so just take it with a grain of salt. Asphias. I think the saying should be amended to include that it does not mean you have to solve the fight you had before going to bed. It is very well possible to say something like, look, we still have to solve whatever happened today, let's sleep on it, and talk about it tomorrow, but know that I do want to try and work it out with you, let's get through this together. AITA for refusing to play nice with my dad's girlfriend and stopping them from moving in together. My mom, 37, had me when she was 17, and to be honest, she was never really a mom to me. I was raised by my grandparents, and then later by my uncle, 34. When I was 8, my grandma got sick, and my uncle, who was just 22 at the time, took me in. By the time I was 12, I moved in with him full-time. I only saw my mom at family events, and even then, she was always criticizing me, how I looked, my hobbies, and just about everything. By the time I was 14, I decided I was done. I didn't want to see or talk to her anymore. When I turned 18, my uncle offered to legally adopt me, and I decided to go tell my mom one last time and try to get some closure. During that talk, she finally told me my father's name. I talked to my family about it, and it turns out everyone knew him. His family lived in the same town as my great-grandparents, and my family used to visit there all the time. So, with my uncle's support, I decided to meet my dad, 36. He had moved back to the area a few years earlier, and he took the news pretty well. I made it clear from the start that I already had a dad, my uncle, but he was open to getting to know me. He even introduced me to his parents, and they found old pictures of me with him from before he went to college. For the past two years, we've had a pretty solid relationship. We call every week, and I see him pretty often. He and my uncle even get along great. The problem? His girlfriend, Anna. They've been together for over three years but don't live together. Anna made it clear from day one that I wasn't welcome. She gives off the same toxic vibes as my mom, always making snide comments and pointing out that I don't belong. After a few encounters, I started avoiding visits when she was around. My dad picked up on it, and he made sure she wasn't always there when I came over. Still, I only see her at family dinners, and she always finds a way to make me feel like an outsider. She'll say things like, if you were really part of the family, you'd know that, or make remarks about how I don't look like my dad. It sucks. Then last week, she called me, and I thought it was some emergency. But nope, she wanted to talk about how she and my dad want to move in together, but he's holding back because he's worried I'll stop coming around if she's always there. She basically told me I needed to put my feelings aside and be nicer to her, for his sake. I straight up told her no. I've spent years in therapy learning to cut toxic people out of my life, and being around her is like being around my mom all over again. I'm not putting myself through that again. I talk to my uncle, and he agrees, my mental health comes first. But some other people have told me I'm being selfish, and that I should make an effort for my dad's happiness. When I explain my family situation to people a lot of them, not close friends and immediate family, say the same thing how lucky I am to have a bio dad who wants and agrees to spend time to get to know me, how grateful I should be. My bio dad or his family never made me feel like that but I guess that after hearing a lot of people saying it, it kind of got to me and I realized now that I was restraining myself to not disappoint him. I guess in my mind I had to work and be nice to have his affection because I did not deserve it. You can blame my bio mom for that. Anyway, after realizing that I also realized that I never told him and his parents how his GF was treating me and I also realized she was smart enough to do it when they roll out of Yersha. I am a non-confrontational person and I was scared to say everything at once to my bio dad, and I was afraid to not be able to express properly everything I wanted to convey. I talked to my uncle about it, and he proposed to make an appointment with a therapist to have a kind of family session, 
so it would be easier for me to express myself. We did it before in our family, and it helped me a lot. We talked about it to my bio dad, and he immediately agreed. He could sense that something was off. Anyway, during the session I kind of exploded. I started talking and couldn't stop myself. At first I felt that it made no sense because I was saying everything and nothing at once but luckily the therapist helped a lot. We all had a very long talk and put everything on the table. My bio dad had no idea that it was this bad with his GF and he was really appalled and remorseful for not realizing it. Something that angered him and my uncle a lot was the comment about me not looking like my dad, which I never took notice of because it's true. My mom and uncle are half Filipino, and I took everything from the Filipino side except his dimples. Apparently, the comments about me not being part of the family. All of this happened last month and since then he broke up with her, and I try to be more honest about what I feel without being afraid of what he thinks. He also proposed to continue family therapy if I feel like it would help me talk about certain topics. This relationship is still a work in progress, but Honsulti I feel very good about it. And some of you asked, but yes, my uncle adopted me when I turned 18. Top comment. Travel kitty. And she is saying, Op should be nicer to her? How about this woman can be nicer to Op? Maybe she should start with an apology, not that it'll actually happen. I bet even though she's making these ridiculous demands, she hasn't once shown remorse. Participant 1. Yeah, let's be perfectly clear here, Op. You aren't refusing to play nice. You're not tolerating someone who is outright mean to you, which is within your right to do. If Anna really cared about your dad, she would try to care about what he cares about. And he cares about you. Instead, she only cares about what your dad cares about when it can further her goals. Actions meet consequences. And today, Participant 2. This. Also, your bio dad doesn't want her to move in BC, he values your relationship and wants to provide you a safe space. I would speak to bio dad let him know that you probs won't make it around as often BC you're uncomfortable with his GF, but that it has nothing to do with him and you support his relationship if he wants to pursue you off if that's how you feel. Participant 3. Absolutely NTA. I'm so sorry all that happened to you. I'm also so glad you were blessed with such an amazing, amazing uncle dad. Where was your bio dad all those years? If you were in pictures with him, he knew about you. It's great he wants to protect you and keep you safe. If she were to move in, you'd need to meet him somewhere else to visit and catch up. I'm sorry she's been so unkind to you. That's not okay at all. I'm proud of you for standing up for yourself. Op. Oh, sorry if I wasn't explicit enough in my post. It's hard to explain well with the character limit. My bio dad never knew I was his son until two years ago. My mom always told us my father was a summer fling and she didn't know who he was. My bio dad lived in the same town as my great grandparents, so they all were kind of summer slash holidays friends. He and his family met me, but in their eyes I was the new grandkid. My grandparents and his parents were close so they used to have dinner and spend afternoon together. So until he left for good I used to see him sometimes during holidays.